What's up YouTube and welcome to another tutorial using Infinite Painter where today I'm going to show you how you can create this really cool wallpaper design again using Infinite Painter and the free palette that I provided in the description down below. There's two ways you can download it as well as helpful videos on what to do once you've got it. So have fun with it and also messing around with the shadow designs and if you're interested in what equipment I'm using today I am using the XP Pen Magic Drawing Pad. It comes with this beautiful matte finish, a case, you actually get the pen as well as the glove as well. So check that out using the links in the description down below. And if you want to support the channel here and all the work that I do, you can now become a member of the channel where you get early access to these tutorials and much, much more to come in the future. So check that out using the link in the description down below. And with all that said, let's get started. So we're going to get started by creating a canvas. I'm just going to set it to my default, which is your wallpaper size traditionally. And then if you hit create, once we're through to our canvas, we're going to go ahead and zoom out. And as always, I'll have provided multiple ways for you to get the palette. There is an image, which you can simply download to your photos. Then just go up to the three dots in the top right, go to import, select the image. It will then ask you, do you want to import it as a layer or reference? Import it as a reference. You'll get a lovely little floating window and then go to settings and make sure that towards the bottom here, that long press gesture is set to eyedropper. That way you'll be able to go ahead and hold down with your finger like so to then get a ring around it so you can select the color. Otherwise, you can go ahead and download the actual palette file and I'll leave a link to how to import them in the description down below. So if you go to your colors over here, you'll be able to scroll through until you find the wallpaper actual uh, palette for today's design. Now, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go up to our layers. If we go to our layers and we go to our background color, we're gonna change the background color here and we're gonna wanna go to our palette for today and we're gonna grab this tone here. So it's the sixth color in the palette. And once we've done that, we can tap away. We're then gonna to go to our brush of choice for today. And we're gonna to go to the option of fills. We're gonna use solid fill. And then make sure you go to the settings for it and you make the smoothness all the way up to 100% and then hit the tick when you're done. Now what we can do is we can go to our colors. We can go ahead and grab the first color in the palette, the darkest red, and we can get started on adding in our wavy fun design. Now there's different ways you can do it. You can have kind of diagonal lines like this and have the waves this way instead or you can do them just simply side to side where we're, we're very vertical with our lines one after the other. It's totally up to you. I'm gonna go for a little bit of both. So I'm gonna start sort of down here and just create a lovely big swirl. Make sure you go all the way around and all the way off to the left hand side, that's really important. Then we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. We wanna make sure that the layer is underneath. So we're just gonna go there for a minute and we're gonna go ahead and create, let's just add another four new layers underneath. So we've got five total. So we wanna be the layer underneath. We go to the next color, we go to the red, and it's the second color in the palette. And then you wanna create another line that's a little bit different to the previous one. And then go all the way around that left-hand side and back to the beginning. Then go down a layer, go to the next color, third color, and then do something different again. So I'm curving outwards this time. So this time I'm gonna try and sort of create something a little bit like this. In fact, let's undo that one. Let's try and make that a little bit smoother, but I liked it and go all the way around that left-hand side. I'll go down a layer again. I'll go to my colors. I'm gonna make sure that we grab the fourth color in the palette. And again, we wanna then create a new layer. So this one can just weave its way across the screen, go all the way around like so. Then we'll go ahead and go down a layer. Now, if we just triple check our colors, we have one more color to introduce here. So we've got one new layer, so that's perfect. So we'll grab that. And then we're gonna go ahead and just introduce our final color and go all the way around that left-hand side. And you've got the reds all done. We'll then go ahead and we'll go right to the top of our layers. We're gonna go ahead and create four new layers at the top. The top new layer up here, we're gonna go to our colors. We're gonna go to the last color in the palette, the 10th color there. And we'll repeat on this opposite side. So you can see I've got a little bit of a leaning line. And then that way I'm gonna go ahead and sort of back that up a little bit by also sort of doing it on this side as well. You can see it's slightly leaning. If we go to the layer underneath, we go back to our colors, we grab the next color down. So it's the ninth color in the palette. And then we go ahead and we just run this off to the edge like so, and try and sort of vary it up. Now don't be sort of happy necessarily straight away with what you do. You may wanna go ahead and do it a couple of times. So let's go ahead and sort of swoop that round here. I'll go round. I like how it sort of sits in behind there, that's cool. I'll go to the next layer down. I'll go to my colors. I'll grab the next color in the palette. And let's go ahead and let's try and run this one through here like so, and then round like this. And then we'll go to the layer down. We'll go to our colors once more time. We'll grab the next color, this one here. 
and we'll do that again. So now we'll just create another wavy line. And again, you may not like it first time. I didn't quite like that one. So I'm going to go around again. And I'm going to keep going until I find exactly what I want and go all the way around. Now I've got this lovely channel running through the middle. And we've got some nice layers to it. Now, of course, at any time, if you don't like a layer, say now you've finished your design, you can always go ahead and simply tap on the layer, tap on it again, and just go to the option of clear. Find that color in the palette. So it's this one here and then redo it. So you may want to just go backwards a couple of steps just so you can get the right design and just see something that you like the look of. You know, there's not necessarily a right or wrong way of doing it. I quite like it when they have a little bit more waviness to it like this side. So now you're done with your actual colors, it's now time to add shadows and the depth effect. So starting at the top, you tap on the layer, you duplicate it. You go to the bottom one out of the two, tap on it and change its blend mode from normal to the option of color burn. And then once you change it to color burn, you can tap on it, tap away, and then you can go up to your tools, edit, we go to edit and filters. We go to blur, tap on blur. I would recommend just simply leaving it at 50% and hitting the tick and repeat, go down a layer, tap on it, duplicate it. The bottom one out the two, tap on it. Change the blend mode from normal to the optional color burn. Tap away, go up to your tools, edit, filters, go to blur, and again, leave it at 50% and then hit the tick when you're done. Again, you're gonna to wanna to repeat this for every single layer. So you go again, change the blend mode, color burn, tap away, go up to your tools, edit, filters, blur, and then leave it at 50%. So now I've shown you that repetition, do that again for every single layer all the way down. So once you've done and you've added in all of your little shadows here, it's now time to adjust those shadows based on what you want your lighting angle to be. You can be really creative here, but for example, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and select the very bottom layer here, which is the yellow burn layer here. I'm gonna to go to my tools. I'm gonna to go to transform and basic. And then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll be able to tap on each layer I also want to select. So I can select all of the warm tones on this left-hand side. Now it's really important that if you are on a different device, you may have a little tiny checkbox in the corner here to select the multiple layers. Now at this point, I've selected multiple layers. I can scale them up at the same time by dragging in the bottom right. And then I can move all of those shadows around and reveal the depth and take the depth away. So what I can go ahead and do is if I move my canvas a little bit, I can pick and choose where I want that lighting angle to be. Do I want it to be in a downwards angle? Do I want it to be in an upright angle? Now for me, I think moving them in an upright angle looks the best. However, you can see this shape here on the left doesn't get much shadow. So that's something that you'll need to bear in mind for your own work. Now I'm gonna set a general level or say, let's make it a little bit lower down and let's push it across to the top a tiny bit and then hit the tick when you're done. And then what you can do is you can go into individual layers wherever you want to. So I'm going to grab the shadow for this left hand side. I'm going to go to my tools and I'm going to go to edit and transform. So edit, transform, basic, and I'm going to move just that one layer on its own. So you can adjust individual layers should you feel it's necessary. And then hit the tick when you're done. And I urge you to do that for all of them. So you can set a general level and then you can get back into individual layers and move them around how you see is fit for your design. So maybe you want to tuck one in, maybe you want to make it really subtle, or maybe you want to go really big and make it really like really big shadow. It's totally up to you. So I'm going to make this one a little bit more subtle and hit the tick when I'm done. But again, everybody's might look a little bit different. So you're more than welcome to again, just keep trialing what you think looks good. Of course, we then need to represent that on the opposite side. So we go up to the top again, we're going to go ahead and select the very top color burn layer. We'll go to our tools, edit, basic transformation, and we'll select all of the color burn layers, and then we can move these in the opposite direction. So make sure you scale it up a little bit because, because we move it in a direction, sometimes you need that extra bit of size there just to be able to give you something to actually move out of the way. So you could create a sort of uh, a resisting kind of shadow. It's down in this bottom side instead, rather than um, in the upright angle, this one's in the opposite angle. So it's totally up to you what you want to do. I think there's loads of different combinations that you can play with. I think if you match up to this left-hand side, it does look pretty cool. I don't think we need to go too big with it, but it's at the bottom that we're most interested in. So let's make sure that we, we move that out enough like so. And that looks pretty good. 
So I'm going to settle by making this one a little bit bigger and I'm actually going to move it in a downwards angle. So it kind of is the opposite to that side. And then when you're done, you are finished, and you've got a lovely wallpaper that you can now use for your tablet or your phone. How cool is that? Now, one little tip at the end, I urge you to also, if you want to go into these layers and edit the blend mode, you don't have to use color burn. You can change it to something completely different, maybe linear burn or some of the darker tones up towards the top here. You may otherwise like overlay, which is also a very nice color as well. So you can set that to overlay and then go through all of them individually and then maybe set them to overlay. See, so you get different effects, maybe hard light, soft light and so on and vivid light. But I liked color burn because it was nice and strong. So I'm going to set that back to color burn. So I hope you enjoyed this infinite painter tutorial. Make sure to tag me in your finished creations over on Instagram, Facebook or anywhere else that you want to share your work with me. And if you're interested in what equipment I'm using today, this is actually the XP pen magic drawing pad. It comes with this beautiful matte screen uh, cover on it built in as well as a case. You actually get the stylus, a glove and exchangeable nibs as well. So check that out using the links in the description down below. And if you like this video here on YouTube, you'll love this one on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.